So this is um, sort of a very well um, published and um, relied on a graph that shows us the different uh, common facies throughout the pressure temperature um, variant. So you can see that um, up in the very low pressure and temperature, up in the um, top left, we've got non-metamorphosed rocks, and those rocks are shale and basalt, right? Because shale is a sedimentary rock and basalt is an igneous rock. So as we start increasing our temperature and pressure, we start developing different mineral suites, and those different mineral suites can be um, correlated to facies, that can be very well correlated to different pressure and temperature environments. We have the green schist facie as we move down, hornfels facie, which if you guys remember, hornfels are a metamorphic rock, and phibolite facies, the blue schist facies below that, and then down at the bottom we have eclogite facies where we have the highest temperature and pressure um, combinations that are um, documented. So if we were to find, let's say, an eclogite facies, right, what type of environment then could we deduce that that came from? And the same with zeolite facies, what could we deduce that it came from? Because that's really our goal, as I said, is to backtrack and decide what the geologic history is. Once we decide that, yes, we have a um, green schist facies and it experienced this type of environment. We can say that it came from a parent rock of a shale and that the shale was then once deposited by a low-laying lake. So we had some sort of um, geologic uh, tectonic movement as that lake was closed and we had pressure and temperature increase. So all of this is in the development of our geologic history or our, our geologic story.